okay. Welcome Wargamers to 2 Plus Top, and today we are diving into one of the most awesome topics in the Mortal Realms, and that is the WAW. If you are or have ever encountered an orc player, you will probably have heard this yelled at the top of their lungs, uh, very forcefully interrupting games, and uh, people get very excited when they hear about this, but we're going to dive into what it actually is, what it means, and how it fits into the Mortal Realms. Now, as I said earlier, this is a pretty big term for any type of orc. And it's kind of a fun word because it has multiple meanings as we, who are not orcs, would understand it. It can be described as a military campaign. You could say that there is an impending wall. I mean, there's like a military force of orcs coming at you, right? The wall is coming this way. Uh, you could also refer to a particularly strong war boss's assault, meaning um, wall bone ripper. He is leading this force against this particular attack. So it's very similar to the first one, where it's not a campaign. It's more this individual's kind of rampage through a certain area. So a little more individuality to that one. And the third one, which we're going to probably talk about the most today, is this kind of supernatural force, the WA, that empowers orcs. Now we're going to talk about that last one quite a bit, and most of the lore for this comes from the Bone Splitters Battle Tome, as well as the Iron Jaws have a little bit in there as well. And what this is, is the collective energy from excitement and bloodlust, but it makes itself manifested in ways that look like magic. This energy, this raw emotion out there, can be harnessed by like a Wurgok Prophet from the Bone Splitters or a weird knob shaman from Iron Jaws and channeled into an actual physical attack. I was trying to describe this to someone. I had a friend locally who was kind of interested in Age of Sigmar. This is back when I had my bone splitters and he was asking about what the WA meant. And so trying to kind of position it to him like, okay, okay, think about this. Think about Woodstock. Okay, like we know in Woodstock, the big concert in the U.S., and there were tons of people there for an experience of music and drugs and freedom. Everyone was on the same page. And the words you hear about this concert or a series of concerts, it was electrifying. It was powerful. It was huge in magnitude. People just felt something by being at Woodstock. And it's, it's that kind of communal, everyone has this shared vision and purpose and feeling that is made manifest. Imagine if someone could channel that kind of power into doing something at Woodstock. It'd be insane. Well, when a horde of orcs comes together and the drums are beating, the axes are swinging, blood's flying everywhere, and the tough talk starts, they generate those same feelings. An electrifying, powerful, emotional, excited, bloodlust, all those feelings. But the difference is theirs can be sort of cobbled together into an actual force of nature. And when these prophets or these shamans, whichever one it is, uh, starts channeling this raw wa energy, it can take a few different forms. For example, there's a story in the Bone Splitters about a Wargog prophet who channels it into a giant literal green fist that punches another enemy wizard. On the tabletop, it's the same thing as Arcane Bolt, right? It's the, a magical attack that does damage. But in their kind of particular lore as they're channeling this power it takes the form of a giant green fist rather than a lightning bolt in addition to that the bone splitters also see a religious aspect to it as they are prone to do they're more religious of the orcs uh, they see it as a physical manifestation of gorgamorka right it was literally his fist who pounded that enemy wizard when they cast the spell foot of gork it is literally the foot of gork come down and smashing their enemies and so this magic quote unquote, is very interesting for a few reasons. One, the way it's described is not like we typically describe magic. For example, people are talking about different schools of magic. We often have the imagery of wizards of the order races kind of like being very scholarly, right? We have the, the Phoenix Temple and all those things researching and harnessing magic for the betterment of the civilizations. But when we talk about the power of wa energy it is like a force of nature unto itself it is just a natural byproduct of nature happening in this case nature is a flood of orcs destroying things and of course you and i would be like there's nothing natural about a giant green fist punching someone but they see it that way it is a natural manifestation right it is a it is a beast in and of itself that goes out there and does the damage and i've always loved that i think i pointed it out in my bone splitters lore that like 
when they describe these things, they don't talk about them. Like, we usually when we talk about magic, it sounds very out of the ordinary. But to them, it's not. This is literally just a part of nature. It just happens. It manifests around them, and they're so imbued in it, and they cause it. Very, very fascinating. Now, another thing that makes this power so incredibly cool is that how unique it is in that it doesn't draw from anything. When the mortal realms were created, each kind of was imbued with its own kind of magic. Obviously, for example, death magic is in the realm of death. And you can always get grave sand or whatever it's called, the raw physical essence of death magic. And death magic permeates the entire thing. It's all about death magic, right? Big, big stamp of death magic on that place. But the unique thing about the wall and that kind of power that draws from it, it doesn't draw from anywhere. It's self-created. They take the magic wherever they go. And it's incredible to think that the source of power and damage and your manifestations of your god and all those kinds of things are with you all the time. They carry it with you. And I'm sure as this their kind of faith and belief system feeds in on itself, like, well, I see Gork here. Well, that's because you brought the magic there. Well, I brought the magic here because I saw his manifestation there. And this whole cycle just continues. And that's where you get these huge rampaging hordes of bone splitters and iron jaws and prophets and shamans and doing all these crazy things to channel and harness the power of the wall. Now, it must also be noted that the kind of power that this thing draws is super touchy. By that, I mean uh, most stories of prophets and shamans end with their heads exploding because they can't handle the kind of magical power that comes to them. When a tribe or a warband of orcs get really into combat, there's just so much of this power and this electricity being built up that it becomes so hard to channel that these leaders, these shamans, prophets, just cannot take it. It overrides them and they eventually just self-destruct. The sheer ferocity of it cannot be channeled anymore. And all these elements make for a really a wild and untamed feel for a type of damage in the mortal realms. Meaning... The fact that no one has can capitalize on this, no one can own this kind of power, that it is, in a religious sense, wild and free, but also in a literal sense of, like, you can't contain this power. It really exemplifies destruction in general, but then also Gork and Mork, because there's that kind of wild, rampaging, free. Now, as we're talking about this word, the one thing I want to finish on is I do want to go back and touch on the military campaign aspect of this. As we talked about Iron Jaws, and actually, Bone Splitters mentioned it as well. They are both factions that are looking forward to something they call the Great Wall. Now, this is going to be the epic military campaign where Gorkamorka comes down and actually leads the armies to destruction, and they're going to just destroy everything in the mortal realms. Just have a free for all, right? It's going to be like there was the Age of Chaos and the Age of Sigmar, and then it's going to be the Age of Gorkamorka or destruction, or however you want to word that. And that is incredibly cool because you see all these factions have a sort of pseudo-religious slant to them and so when they are talking about the great wall this is like their valhalla right heaven come to earth type thing and so when they talk about the great one that is an incredibly interesting piece of lore and i really hope they develop that further going with gordrak uh, in the future and the minute they do we'll be covering it in detail because the finality of all these things the wild and kind of unfettered nature and brutality of all these kinds of different aspects of the wall are incredibly fascinating lore perspective. So folks, I know this is a brief one, but this is my uh, take on the power of the wall. Now, I know some people uh, pronounce it wa, they pronounce it war, meaning they're literally trying to say war. However you want to pronounce it, I've heard Games Workshop people say it both ways. I'll let you debate about that in the comments down below. If you have an H. Sigmar lore topic you would like discussed, please click subscribe and leave it in the comments down below. I need your guys' ideas on videos going forward for AOS, aside from doing just battle tome coverage. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching, and happy wargaming. Hey friends, I hope you enjoyed that video, and I want to introduce you to some awesome folks. These are my patrons over on Patreon, and they make this show possible by their direct support of me to buy battle tomes and black library books and all the material I need and the hardware support that I need to make this stuff possible. And if you'd like to join them, go ahead and click over to the Patreon page, to the link in the description down below, and you'll be introduced to a really awesome community of people 
talking about the hobby, sharing what they're painting. Uh, I invite them uh, to be part of polls to decide what content comes next. I raffle off every battle tome that I review, and we're having some great fun and discussions over there. So go ahead and check it out. Now, if you can't support in that way, that's completely fine. I'm just so glad that you watched this video here today. And if you have an Age of Sigmar lore question, go ahead and click subscribe and leave it in the comments down below. I read every single question and comment. I respond to as many as I possibly can, but I use them all as inspiration for future videos. So go ahead and do that now. And I look forward to seeing you guys on my next Age of Sigmar lore video. Thank you so much for watching, and happy wargaming.